Do we shape cities, or do cities shape us? Our bodies are connected to the people and the places that surround us. The architecture, the public spaces, the cultures, and the histories all prompt us to move in different ways. So how does a city affect our tactile, kinesthetic, relationships with its surfaces and with each other. A city can be a leviathan, a beast that insidiously constricts and conforms us. As our sensual responses and impulses become numb, our postures and patterns of movement turn into stone-like habits. So is it possible to do the opposite, to reimagine a city? to reanimate it through the moving body. My name is Nicholas Rowe, and I'm a community dance artist. And I'm fascinated by how people can reclaim the urban spaces around them through their creative, moving body. من خلال الرقص بجد نفسي وبجد السبيس مكان اللي اخلق فيه جميع الشغلات اللي ما بقدر اعيشها بمجتمع ان كان الحريه بالتنقل الحريه بالتعبير عن حقوقي عن رغباتي عن احتياجاتي I actually felt a such love for my town and also I felt such a power, especially because we were dancing in the very center maybe of the of the shells in front of this beautiful tower in this Yeah, in a way it was really kind of sexual and erotic. We were really throwing ourselves on the floor properly. The the floor in the in the square was, was just perfect. We live our lives often with someone saying, oh, don't do that, or, <laughs> or get off the stage, or you don't... You can't do that. Or you can't do that, or yeah, that you're just, just showing off. Yeah. Whereas this, to me, is permission to transcend, yeah, 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 permission right. to be bigger than mm -hmm. you are. Belfast, a very tiny little bit of the whole timeline of art. I felt like, yes, at this moment I'm contributing to that, creating history and culture and heritage. Bo is a creative exploration of young Fijians into who they are existing today within the Pacific and in an ever-changing world.
we start to make a group, one of our friends say, wow, what you guys doing? That's news, that is hip hop. I saw in France, I saw in another country, but you guys doing it here? Can we join? The life conditions in the camp, it's really hard. There are no spaces for our children to play, even to dance. If they want to dance, they can't. The populations of cities are continually changing through migration, through birth, and through longevity. Are cities responding to these shifts? How might our momentary dancers question a city and challenge the entrenched disparities, exclusions and divisions? Through dancing within the walls, stones and shadows, can we reclaim these spaces in between? For the last 10 years, I have been workshopping these questions with community-focused dance organizations and projects in very different cities around the globe. From Scandinavia to Southeast Asia, the Mediterranean to the South Pacific, in cities on islands, in cities beside deserts, in cities at war, and in cities between wars, in cities as refuge, and in cities as recreation. Dancers are imagining and reimagining what a city's community might mean. Together we have created dancers in, through, and with their cities. Their creations have not focused on performance, but on discovery and communion. Their dancers do not represent these cities, but instead respond to these cities. They are using dance to reclaim the spaces around them. This film shares some of their creations. And shares how we made
In the eastern Mediterranean, Beirut is a complex city with huge differences in wealth and political status. So this is a Borja Borjana camp. It's one of more than a dozen refugee camps set up across Lebanon following the 1948-49 war with more than 700,000 refugees coming out of the newly formed state of Israel. There's about 18 to 20,000 people living inside this camp. The life conditions in the camp, it's really hard because we have the first problem, we have health problem. Also, we have the, the garbage problem, the salinity problem because during winter it explodes, which makes a lot of diseases and which makes the rats come out. And also the unemployment problem, like most of the youth right now, they stay at home, they don't work and they do nothing. And even the educated one, like when they graduate, they don't have the opportunity to work because as a Palestinian, it's not allowed for you to work. So this is the Markaz Al Arabiya Palestini. It's the Palestinian Arab Center for the Borja Borjana camp. It's one of, one of the larger cultural centers or gathering places in the camp. It was established in 1993, as in most of the other centers here for cultural activity. It's staffed principally by volunteers. It's resourced by people giving their time and their effort to make things happen here. And it's one of the main places for dance within the camp. Sina is the kind of city that needs to wake up somehow. You have this like huge landscape in front of you and it's so you know stable and you know that it's going to be there forever. And you you, you feel like you would like to, you know, to break something in this kind of, you know, picture, always so perfect. Corte de Miracoli is a community organization housed within the University of Siena. Corte offers language classes to new immigrants and dance classes, and so gathers people in Siena who are interested in both movement and cross-cultural communication. Of course, also in this city there are many conflicts, but they are never shown, they never come up, because everything is covered, you know, by this constant, you know, bella vita and beauty and laziness. Nordic countries are kind of a super hygienic bubble compared to the rest of the world. I'm from Iraq and I've been living in Finland for several years and I moved to Helsinki last year. I still feel kind of uh, new to the town. When we all came together at the University of the Arts for this project, it was quite an interesting time. The refugee crisis in Europe had brought political, social, cultural issues to the front. So this project brought together asylum seekers from Iraq and Syria with performance students from across Finland and the world together to create dance. For me, it's, it's a project to be a city, but it's not a city, really. It's like a small village that had a shock from a political agreement, and it started to, to pretending to be a city. It's really fragmented by the wall and the settlements and the checkpoints. If you want to get out of Ramallah, you have checkpoints. And if they close the door, you will stay in the city.
Sunu Dance Troupe established in uh, 1979. In the beginning, they started uh, to dance as a part of uh, protecting the Palestinian identity. And then it started to evolve to an artistic project. Vientiane sits on the Mekong River, which borders Laos and Thailand. With Lao Bang Fai start, we start in 2000 with a group of friends who like to do something new, especially about the dance scene. Before we know nothing about hip hop, we just see the scene like, wow, interesting. Wanna do something like this in Laos. We have over a hundred people in different provinces. Also, the Wing Jan is the base of the dance group in here, and some study in university. When they finish, they go back to their hometown, so they bring the idea from us back to their province. Cloaked by mountains and jutting into the Pacific Ocean, the tropical port city of Suba is a place of rapid and increasing urbanization and a base for Vo Dance Company. Well, Vo for me is the merging of the old and new, the traditional dance forms and the modern contemporary dance techniques fused together to showcase who we are as urban Fijians. spirit and manner of Fijian contemporary dance to the world. In the tropical far north of Australia, Darwin is a relatively isolated city. In 1988, nearly 30 years ago, Great Panthers was formed inside a performance. And one of the choreographers working on that show realised that there was no one in that show over 50 years of age. And so a group was brought together, I think there was only five of them initially, and they performed and then they wanted to keep going because they wanted to say that we're not invisible, we are here and we can do this. And this was not a group of dancers, this was a group of senior women who like to dance together.
When we create something together, we have the chance to create both an artistic product and an artistic relationship with those involved in the creation. The connection that comes from creating something together can linger for years, like an unspoken bond. We once danced together. We are really believing in the collective work and in the collective identity and collective imagination. So we work together. So what is involved in a collaborative creative process? Initiating creative relationships is not always easy. Um, at the start of the workshop, we would play games as a way to, A, I think, actually get our bodies moving in the space so that we were kind of all there, brought our focus there. We were laughing with each other and it was funny and we were allowed to kind of fail or get it wrong and we were there for each other. And that kind of continued through the activities that we do. So maybe if it was something that was a little bit out of a comfort zone or a little bit daunting, it was okay to maybe not really know or get it wrong maybe, because then you knew you could just get back into it and keep going and that wasn't going to be an issue with each other. Creating dance can require improvisation. Improvising allows us to both communicate ideas and to discover new ideas. Improvisational tasks in small groups encourage the participants to incorporate whatever movement repertoire they want to explore. Movements from codified training, like ballet and Bharatnatya, or traditional social dance forms, like dubka and sasa, or urban forms like hip hop and jazz, or whatever they come up with in the moment. We all gathered in the dance studio, about 20 of us, and we were separated randomly into, I think, five or six groups, and we each had to make a beat with our hands and with our feet first, and then we added dance moves to the rhythm we made with our hands and with our feet. So we had a combination between rhythms and dance moves, and then we had to teach each other the moves that we came up with, and we made them into a big choreography. Creating movement ideas in pairs or small groups requires a lot of generosity and appreciation, an inclination and ability to look for the good in someone else's idea, build on it, and to let go of one's own idea and expectations over the direction it might take. Collaboration is really fun. And I think that it really changes the dynamic of um, the dance space. It's a give and take. It's more of a conversation then. It's not just a one-way thing happening. It makes the work a lot more fulfilling and um, the final piece even more interesting because there's more input into it than just one person. So in the workshop process, these small group improvisational moments lead to compositional discussions. These reflective discussions allow dancers to share what the dance felt like from inside the storm and make collective artistic decisions from that embodied place. My, my friends, girls and guys, we're gonna do this. They tell me, no, we're gonna do this. And we pull and push for them back until we come up and uh, something like we all agree to. It 
it's really hard, but at the same time, you can see how it gives also the body spaces to move. Because when you are stuck in your imagination, sometimes you would be really restricted with your imagination. But when you share your imagination, the dancers and with the, with the group, it became really an exciting experiment. Performance is another moment in the process. It provides both a focus for the creative journey and another opportunity to refine the creative relationship. It's a moment of fantasy, of saying, I'm now something or someone else, and so are you. Or, I'm now a slightly different version of me. You are now another version of you. At the beginning, it was a bit like, yeah, am I really going to do this? But like then, when I was in the middle of the moment, the first scene I have done, I thought, wow, that's exciting. Like, that's cool. Like, I, I'm like, I feel like a five years old child. And then like day after day, I was like more excited to go the second day and do more things and then go back home, think of them. It was, it was nice. You feel really alive. من خلال الرقص بقدر أوصل لأحلام. أنا صادق كثير إني كنا زواجي عم طلعوا بالرقص. In the 21st century, the idea of community has extended to include all sorts of imagined, global, and virtual forms of association. At the same time, our understandings of community is still very much built upon a connection between people and place. So how can dancers within cities question this relationship between people and places? We can start with three dance questions. What are the physical possibilities of a place? What are the aesthetic impressions? What are the cultural meanings? By considering the physical possibilities, 
we explore how the design of a space actually enables creative movement. Cityscapes immediately present obstacles and opportunities for movement that are simply not available in an empty flat studio. It's a city full of like affordances and constraints in the architecture, stairs and ramps and levels in the landscape and different heights. Our aim within each of these films was to explore and exploit these possibilities. When you dance uh, in the ground, uh, in the corner of the wall. The sensation you have a very different like uh, dancing uh, in a school or other place uh, inside but outside to feel the city. City spaces also provide a huge variety of aesthetic impressions. It's very really surprising when you frequent a place every day and you don't look at it, you don't really watch it, you don't pay attention. You know, your, your eyes are always going the same places. So the alleyway that we were in initially seemed really bleak, but the longer that we spent in the space, the more we started to realise that it actually had a really interesting aesthetic quality. Any location, when explored from new perspectives, can become very engrossing, enlivening our senses of touch, sight, and balance. There are, of course, also the cultural meanings of a place. The spaces that surround us in cities offer layers and layers of culturally constructed meanings. These might be very personal, from our own lived experiences in the place, or passed on to us through historical and wider political narratives. So in our process of reclaiming space, how can we reveal and extend, or juxtapose and redefine those cultural meanings? I guess importantly, the work we create is for the people that live in this particular place. So it, it needs to both belong to that individual, but also in a broader sense, belong to that community. It's really important to relate it also to the to the city that you are working in.
Digital technology can allow groups to communicate with each other and to intersect with the world. Digital technology has also revolutionized the way we create dances, the way we perform dances, and the way we view dances. It was about details rather than something big for me. That was the big change for me because rather than having to perform something that you want people to see, you could choreograph a finger, you could choreograph a shoulder or just a really small moment in the details in the body. Dancing with the camera is different from dancing to an audience because the, uh, the view is different. When you're dancing to an audience, it feels like they're watching you from outside, but when you're dancing with the camera, it feels like you're being watched from the inside out. On stage, you can be center stage or in the front or in the back. In filming, everyone gets to be on camera because the camera moves and we film from different angles. So everyone gets to be in the frame. It's really uh, emotional to be in the stage in front of the audience. And this is what sometimes would makes me really move. It's the emotions. In the front of the camera, it's sometimes it's really makes you free when you get out of the emotions of the audience and what the audience is really expecting from you. So if the camera can shift the way we create and perform dance, how might dance reconfigure the way we use cameras? In our workshops, we explored how the camera can become part of the dance, giving an insider or emic perspective. This insider perspective changes dance in a city. Dance becomes more than just a spectacle to be gazed at, but an immediate, visceral journey to be experienced.
So how can dance and digital technology transform urban communities? Turning whatever you love or whatever you're passionate about into a film and spreading it across the country or across the world it's really great because if you're facing a trouble, if you're under occupation or you need people to know about what's happening in your country. stuff that is us inside is not there in the same way that stuff is outside. It's what's at the boundary that we're dealing with. So when we get something, we want to give back to the people who need it. So then every project, we collect some from what we have back to the community. We were passing the stick between each other, and so that was our movement, but in the moments when we were just sitting down and talking, it became that as well, passing things on, sharing memories with each other, sharing stories, and that memory for me is totally connected to this place. In these ways, dance might provide local communities a means of reclaiming space in places like Helsinki, Beirut, Siena, Vientiane, Suva, Darwin, and Ramallah to extend the bonds between people and place. Thank you. 